Hi, and welcome to an application tutorial for Android Studio. We're going to make a simple app in this video, one that will tell jokes. So follow me through here. We're going to click on Empty Activity, and then we're going to choose a name for our application. So instead of My Application, let's give it a name something like our Jokes Application. Now, we notice that there are other changes we can set here. Uh, we are going to leave it at version 14 for our API. So now when the application launches, we have to wait for the compiler to uh, generate all of our classes. So you have to wait a few minutes. So once your application is finished, you will see that there are two new files that are created. One's called activity main and the other one's called main activity. Let's look around here. Let's look inside the app folder and then choose Java. The first folder inside Java will have the file called main activity. So this is an important one to look at. Inside of the resources area, there's an area called layout. And we're looking for activity main XML in there. So those two files that you see are listed in these folders. Now, the next part is to look at the design views options. So we can switch from views such as design only to blueprint plus design or only blueprint. I usually just use the design routine. Down here in the section is called the component tree. And you can see that we have something set up called a constraint layout and one text view. We'll delete the first text view that's provided for us. There are two ways to look at a layout. One is to the, look at the design as we have, and the other is a text version. Let's put some things on our design layout. I'm going to drag a button onto the screen, and then let's move it around. Notice there's a message that says this is not constrained. It has designate, designated positions, and so it will flip to the top left corner of the window if we leave it alone. So what I'm doing now is I'm dragging constraints from the edge of the button to the edge of the screen. These constraints will act like springs or rubber bands that will pull it to the side. You can also switch the margins so that way there's a little bit extra space around the edge. We're going to rename this ID of the button, and I, my convention is to use btn underscore and then the name of the button. Further down, you can change the text on the face of the button. So instead of just the word button, let's put a joke in, such as, why did the chicken cross the road? And as soon as you press enter, you can see that the uh, face of the button is updated. The real way to do this is not just to type in the text but we'll actually create a resource. So the three dots to the edge of the text area are called ellipsis, and this will bring up the resources for our application. I'm going to click on the top right where it says Add Resource. This resource name will be called Joke1, and I'll paste in the text for the joke. The button looks the same, but you can see that the text input area has a symbol that says at string. Let's see where these strings are stored. So I'm choosing the Values folder, and strings XML, and you can see inside there that there is a string resource called joke1. Let's add another button. Once again, we have to add constraints, so I'm going to use these edges, pull away from the dot, attach the button to the bottom of the previous button, the left and right side are attached to the edges. I'm going to set the top margin to 24 pixels. So now we have two buttons on the screen. Once again, let's add a resource for the text of this button. So I'll choose a new string, and I'll call it Joke2. Let's come up with a new joke here. You can come up with your own joke, but uh, if, you're, if you're bad at jokes, let's, uh, let's ask this one. Why did the mother buffalo, or what did the mother, bu mother buffalo say to her child at uh, preschool? We, actually, we have to ask, uh, what did she say to her son? when leaving him at preschool. Okay, have you ever heard this joke? You'll have to wait and find out what the answer is. But the text now shows up on the face of the button. We're going to put a third joke on here, so let's drag another button onto the screen. So for this button, let's add a new resource as well. So we'll choose a new string and we'll call it joke3. So what's this joke going to be? I'm going to say, what is red and smells like uh, blue paint? Do you know this one? I guess you'll have to find out in a few minutes. Notice that the button needs to be aligned, so I will pull the constraint from the left side to the edge. 
I will pull the constraint to the right side. And straight up the top, I will attach it to the bottom of the previous button. So now we have three buttons that are center aligned and they stack on top of each other. Now you notice I don't have the uh, ID set for button two and three, so I'm going to change those now. So let's go up into the ID area at the very top. I'm gonna rename this one as BTN underscore joke one. And there's a note that says, hey, you have an XML file to update. Uh, you'll see that in a while, but why that changed. Button two, let's name as BTN underscore joke two. Also update the uh, layout file. The third joke, let's call it uh, BTN underscore joke three. And so that's my convention is to use BTN for a prefix on all of my button views. Now we're switching into the main activity, Java. The first thing we have to do is define the buttons as variable names. So you can use variable names as any letters you like, but I use the convention of the exact same ID name that I used in the layout. So I'm defining button variables as BTN joke one, joke two, and joke three. I just imported the uh, button class. As you can see, I pressed Alt and Enter, and it updated the code with, a, with an import statement at the top. So the button class is now available to this program. Downside here in onCreate, in this new method, I'm going to define the value of this variable now with a function called findViewById. And then I'm going to use this strange thing called R. R stands for resources. So this is a strange function that needs some explanation. We have the uh, function called findViewById. And uh, that, that tells me that I'm going to the resources on the layout. R dot means it's a class. R dot ID is finding by its ID name. And so I can use button joke one as the first uh, joke um, ID. So I'm going to switch back into the uh, layout or the activity main layout form, XML, and show you that these IDs came from the joke or the buttons that I just created. So let's create the second uh, reference here. So joke two is also going to use find view by ID. We use the same pattern, R dot ID dot button joke two. The third one works the same. So now we have three variables that are set to the ID number of our buttons. The next section we're going to do is we're going to create something called a click listener. A click listener is a function that activates when you click a button. So the first button is joke one. We'll type dot set click listener. And you can see it's a, it's a predefined uh, function in here. Inside of the parentheses, we need to create a new object called a on click listener. And the rest of the code is provided automatically. The message that we're going to display is called a toast. A toast is a dialog box. It's a, it's a one second uh, alert. And so you can put the message inside of the text area of the toast. So here is the answer to the joke. Is why did the chicken cross the road? To get to the other side. Now let's run the program and let's see how this will run. So I've already set up a virtual device here called Nexus and I'm going to run with that one. So if you don't have a phone set up, you're going to have to first of all create a virtual device before you can run it. Or you can plug in your own phone and then your uh, Android phone can run your uh, application for you. So right now I'm just running this on a software phone. Okay, looks like the phone is coming up and there are three buttons. If I click the first one, you can see that there is a message at the bottom that pops up the answer. So let's try it again. Let's click it and you can see the message to get to the other side. So I haven't activated the second button or the third button yet, so they don't do anything, but we're, we're going to fix that right away. So let's go back into our code and let's add a click listener again. So type in joke two dot set on click listener. And inside of the parentheses, we'll create a new object called onClickListener and use the com compiler's help, uh, help typing to, to complete your work here. So inside of the, uh, inside of the function called onClick, we need to create a, text, a toast. So let's do toast, select the second option, which creates all the parameters for our toast. And then we're looking to fill in the text values. So 
What did the mother buffalo say to her son? She said, bye, son. <laughs> okay, let's go on to joke three. So joke three is to another, another set on click listener. Inside the parentheses, we'll create the new on click listener method. And the uh, toast this time is going to give us the answer of our third joke. I think this was the joke about paint. So what, what's, um, what's red and smells like blue paint? Red paint. Okay, let's run it again. So I click the green arrow and let's run the app. So hopefully it takes less time to load the second uh, attempt at your application. So now when I click on the uh, buttons, I get the answers to my joke at the bottom. Hopefully I get the second and third answer to appear just like the first one did. So if your application works correctly, congratulations. If your application doesn't work correctly, then you'll probably have to go and check some of the ID numbers and things. Okay, let's switch back into our code and I'm going to put another item in the layouts. This is a text view. So this text view needs to be glued in place. So let's use the constraints to attach it to the previous button and also extend the constraints to the left edge and the right edge of the screen. Let's give it some margin at the top. So let's bump the uh, gap to 32 pixels. Now the text looks very small. So let's go see what text appearance has to offer. It looks like we can change the text size so let's push that up to maybe 24. It makes it more readable. So this is going to be the place where we display messages from other buttons. I'm going to change the ID of this text view. I use the TV underscore message as my ID name. So TV underscore is my convention. All right, so now let's generate another joke. So we need another button. So let's drag out the button below the text view. Let's use the constraints to attach it to the bottom of the text view, to the left of the whole arrangement, and then also to the right side of the activity. So the button is centered below the text view. So what are we going to call this joke? Let's go down and add a new text resource. And for this string, we'll name it as joke, uh, what are we up to, four? And here is the joke. What do you call a bear with no ear, or no ears, we'll call it? And so we'll have to see what the joke is in a minute. So let's rename this button ID. Instead of button four, we'll use btn underscore joke four. So the ID name matches the convention. Now we have to add a variable reference here in our code. So after, what is it, line 11? After the other joke, if the other joke buttons, we'll add joke four. And then we're going to put in button joke in the uh, on create method, which will assign a value from the uh, uh, layout. Then finally, down in further in the code, we can create the button listener. So this set of joke buttons is going to use the uh, text view instead of showing toast messages. So a little bit different to show messages, but it, it works very similar. We're going to have to create, uh, let's see, a reference to the text view control. So Text view is also on our layout, so we'll use TV underscore message as the name. Hover over text view and press Alt Enter to get the import created. Now, further down, we have to give the uh, actual value of the ID number of our text view message. And then finally, we can come back to the very bottom and add another click listener. So the newest button is button joke four and we're going to set a click listener on him. So use the same routine that we did in the previous three. Inside of the unclick method, we're going to, this time, set the text of the text view message. So it's a method that just changes the text. The answer to our joke is, what do you call a bear with no ear? You call him B. <laughs> All right, so now let's run the app again, and let's see how this one works. Okay, it looks like the app is starting to run here. And when we have the fourth button, we just click the message, and instead of showing a toast, it changes the text of our text view to the answer of the joke. All right, we need a couple more buttons. We've got a few more jokes left in our, in our collection here. So we'll drag uh, button five and six out now. Now let's put the same constraints on these, attach it to the previous control, attach it to the left, and attach it to the right. 
So giving you six buttons to work with gives you plenty of practice in attaching these uh, constraints. Okay, so the buttons are in place. Time to put some text on them. So let's see, let's go and add a text resource. And this will be the uh, joke uh, five, I believe. So our new joke, it says, not really a joke, he's just a comment and it says, I'm not lazy. And let's see what we're going to do with him. So let's go and set the uh, answer as well. So we have button and I'm looking for button five. Ah, uh, but I forgot. I have to go back to the previous sections and create these references to joke five. You notice that when I start creating my reference to button five, I have to delete it because we forgot at the very beginning to declare the button. So I'm going to create button joke five at the top, and then I can get its value from find view by ID, which should show up as the type ahead help. It does not appear here. Why not? It's because in my layout, I have not named the ID actually. So btn underscore joke five. Let's update the uh, XML file and let's go back and try again. So the red error goes away and now I can create my button listener. So back down to the top, bottom, we can see button five is now showing up. Set on click listener, we'll create a new on click listener object. And then inside of here, we will do another update for the joke. So what was the name of the joke? It says, I'm not lazy. So the text message is going to have the new texts by set text. And we'll just say, I'm just very relaxed. Okay, so we're up to button five. So if you want to just try six on your own, you can probably figure out the pattern, but otherwise follow along with me. So the first thing I do is set the, uh, well, I'm going to set the ID, so I don't want to forget that. This is called button joke six. Let's go set the text and let's um, add a new resource. So the new resource we'll call joke six. And then we'll come up with a new joke. Do you have any good jokes left? How about this one? It says, never let a kiss fool you. And then we'll have some snappy comeback on the second part of it. So once again, we have to go through the routine of adding the variables to our list. So declare button six or joke six as our variable. Then in the next section, we assign the variable a value. So that is coming from this function called find by ID. And now it has a value. So some integer that is assigned to it. And then finally, we can add the button listener function so that we can uh, actually respond to a click. So the last joke that we're going to create is the answer is never let, okay, and never let a fool kiss you. Good advice. All right, so now we've got ourselves strings. If you haven't noticed, there's the strings XML file that has all the jokes listed in them. And that's where you can go modify things if you want to see a global list. Let's run the app again and see what these new buttons do. All right, it looks like the app is up and running. If we click each of these uh, jokes, the text view is up to date. And so there are two ways that we've learned on how to display messages.